Marco is angry and Daniel is sad. They watch TV shows, aren't you glad? For once we're not angry or sad, we're incredibly impressed. We have nice things to say. Mm. Yeah, I think this is the first thing that we're actually coming into it, not like in the middle and we're like, oh, it was actually pretty good. Like, I think we're coming into this happy. And it's the first adaption we've actually liked. Oh, that's why we like June. Well, just straight off the bat, it is a very good show. We've only watched mm -hmm. episode one, but yes. so far, very promising. This very is, good. if you can't read the title, this is going to be just a episode one breakdown, should you watch it, uh, vibes on where we think it's going to go, kind of kind of beat. Yeah. You, it's all out, you can go watch it now, but no one has time for eight hours right now, but we'll get to it. I think part of the reason it is good is, for me at least, mm -hmm. tell me if I'm wrong here because you played a lot more Fallout than I, I did. <laughs> Fallout feels to me more like vibes and... Mm -hmm a world rather than characters yeah like i pretty much can't remember a single character from it yeah it's like world of warcraft in the way that like you remember all the races you remember everything that should be going on and like the grand scheme of like yes. who hates who yeah normally where they fuck things up like this is they're trying to do characters that we know and love and we're like oh my god i love this character and then their race and gender swapped mm -hmm. and then they're just doing whatever the fuck you want yeah but this is an rpg Mm. The this whole is, point is do whatever the fuck. This is, um, and Fallout's a, such a great franchise for it. And I know that to an extent there are like reoccurring characters and, and important people in each story, but the world itself is so like fleshed out and such a good... It's a character. Yes. The world is the character and you're just in it, baby. <laughs> you're like, inside You're playing them. as like a flea on the dog that is like the world like the post-apocalypse yeah. and even just in episode one they've nailed the vibe mm. yeah i guess it's it's a relatively simple vibe of it's the 50s version of the future but post it's weird because when this show does member berries it feels good yes and i think it's just on based on if the show is good so in halo the member berries were all wedged in between really bad scenes really bad dialogue really bad storytelling and they would show that to bring your your mood up yeah whereas this it has really good storytelling great acting great pacing great cinematography and they're not shoving anything in your face like being like battle rifle or whatever <laughs> it's like oh my god i'm like holy shit that's sugar bombs on the tv yes like i'm yeah, just like, like they they do the it uh, feels they do a little good. section where they even flick through the channels of like mm. you're like <gasps> it feels good that's how yeah. it's supposed to feel whereas like other things aren't doing it right um, they're doing it more like, no, we incorporated it in this so you can see that we know. Yeah. We know. It's like you can tell when it's forced. It's mm, like, yes, that's exactly like, what it is. Yeah, it's the, the forced, delivery whereas this is just nice. feels natural. It, feel, it feels like they're filming already. in the timeline. Yes. So that's what I'm really enjoying about this so far is this feels like, maybe I'm just an idiot. Um, it feels like they're filming a show in the Fallout universe, whereas other shows like Halo really pull me out of it where things feel like they're filming on a Halo set. Yes. Am I an idiot for saying I, that? No, I think, I think it's right. I think you're right. Because nothing in this pulled me out. Like mm -hmm. with Ahsoka and Avatar live action, you've got your volume set. So mm -hmm. you've got your big circle rooms where there's characters definitely only staying in the middle of. Yeah. Whereas this looks like they built a vault. Mm. Like there's people walking through like it actually looks like people are moving through the space instead of yeah. the space is moving around them and so i think you're right it does feel real the world feels lived in because even the external scenes they didn't show too many of them but there's enough camera movement it's mm. all dramatic it like feels when we see stuff real. like um like the air force base yes or... it looks like they're in the middle of nevada yeah and there's just like nothing and even like ages. um in the in the opening shot as like the bombs are dropping um when you see like them on the horse like running kind of through like the hollywood hills yeah um it feels like they're there and they're not just like zooming out on a green screen. Yeah. It, it was the same thing I said about Dune. Like nothing took me out of it, mm. which is very rare for me these days because I'm, I'm an absolute asshole. So this show will make you feel good in that regard where you're not having to discount something in your brain so that you can enjoy it. It's like when I go in to watch something and being like, oh, like I know this is going to look like dog shit, but let's just... Uh, let's hope they do the license yeah. justice. You're not Whereas, even you're not suspending your disbelief. Mm, exactly. Like, they, yeah, there's none. I'm just like hell yeah. Mm. Um, another thing I thought just watching it back as it's playing in the background right now, it's a 70 minute episode, which is mm -hmm. pretty hefty, especially for a it's first. It's some episode. movies, <laughs> like almost that. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's getting close. It's moving like mm -hmm. 
people are doing things with the halo it even like most episodes would feel like no one's actually doing anything a bunch of people are talking but no mm-hmm. one's transitioning from one state to another like no one's actually evolving or mm-hmm. making any meaningful decisions yeah whereas in the first half hour of this like eight things happen that completely change multiple characters in very drastic ways mm. and it sets up a mystery mm-hmm. which i need in shows yeah like i need something to be pulling me through yeah. that's why cw shows as goddamn shit as they are they drag you through because they'll mm. give you that little stinger at the end yeah and you'll be like oh what's he up to I, oh, I need to know i'm gonna watch this dog shit show <laughs> to find out what this one character yeah. is thinking Whereas this isn't a dog shit character, but it's still got the mystery. Like, they've set up three main characters, Mm -hmm. and all three of them have a very clear goal and a very definite thing that they're going to be doing throughout the season. Yeah. And it's vague enough that you know they can get eight episodes out of it. It's find a person for all three of them. Mm -hmm. Two of them are the same person, the third one's a different person. Where that will cross over. Yes, and, um, you, it also, that's the thing, it also feels like they can converge. Yeah. Whereas a lot of shows have very parallel plot lines. Like, yeah. parallel plot lines are great if you can see them converging. Mm-hmm. Game of Thrones worked, because you, you had eight parallel plot lines, and they could pepper them in throughout whatever episode they wanted, but you could always see that they were coming to a head. Yeah. Whereas in this, you can see that. Like, I mean, from the get-go, they're like, oh yeah, two people with drastically different goals want the same person mm-hmm. for drastically different reasons. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's got to be a fun scene when everyone gets together. And again, because when we're talking about this, we haven't seen the rest of it. We only yeah. see episode one, remember that? So if these guys all meet up in the next episode and become a trio, cool. Like, I can see that happening. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure they could do that. Like, make the yeah. person hunt not be the episode eight goal, but yeah, be none like... None of them are inherently evil. Yeah. So you like, but then friends. again, if it happens in the eighth episode, cool. You know, like, I'm not fussed uh, on their on their timelines to get to each other. Yes. And if they never see each other and we keep it as three separate timelines, that's I'm also cool with that. Speaking of timelines, that's one thing I'm worried about. Mm-hmm. That's, that's probably my only worry of the show is Jonathan Nolan's involved and he's done some fantastic stuff, mm-hmm. but also he lets timelines get in his way yeah. and he, he could witcher himself. Either way, this family is <laughs> no good. They, I love the Nolans. They, they do good sometimes. <laughs> I'm back and forth on them. But there, there's the whole... He could add too many timelines. He mm-hmm. could Westworld it. But then Westworld was so close to going off the edge so many times. Season one's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Season two, three, four, five, I think it might have gotten to. Pretty much all dog shit. I hated them. And that was because, again, they just let the timelines get in the way. They, they thought they were smarter than they were. Whereas so far, the show's charming. Mm-hmm. They're just, it's just all vibes. They're going with it. It's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about our main character here. Mm-hmm. We've got Lucy. And I remember her name which is an insane thing for me to remember. Like, I don't remember people's names in real life. Mm-hmm. I still couldn't shows. remember some of the characters in Halo, and we were two seasons in. <laughs> yes. Two seasons and 20 you, episodes yeah. in. Every time we were like, oh, the uh, the, ch- the chick's button. Oh, Kai. Yeah. Kai. <laughs> Whereas in this, th- they do it the way I like people do it. Like, they state her name like four times in But that's where minute, they left it. And then they come up with, they, they you know? show her name in writing, and I'm like, bam, I know her name's But Lucy. it wasn't like every single scene, someone would be like, Oh, hey, Lucy. Like, it's not like they're trying to constantly yeah, do it through it, every scene. Lucy, who is my sister. <laughs> yes. They were smarter than that. But it's unprecedented in the modern day. Mm-hmm. We have a female character that is actually very likable. Yes. And, and she can get things done, but it doesn't make you feel like... Self-sufficient. And it, it doesn't make you feel like she's getting it done because she's a woman. Of course she can get it done. It doesn't feel like that, which is so nice. There was a split second where I thought she was about to put down a man to make herself look good. Mm-hmm. But that scene was actually handled very well. Yeah. With We're, we're keeping it incredibly vo- vague here. But yes, that's, that scene is handled very well. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, they both had reasons for doing the thing they did. Immediately, she's very charming. She's very likable. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think I've seen this actress in anything. I don't remember her like, from anything. Army of the Dead. Oh, she's the chicken army of the dead. She's likable, and they're not trying to force us to like her either. Mm-hmm. They even do like a. It shouldn't work as far as like they show flashbacks of her training her whole life mm-hmm. to be efficient in like hand to hand combat and like computer shooting skills. guns and computer skills, and. For any other character, for some reason, that wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. But because she's likable, they don't really force it down your throat. And because it makes sense in the world. Yes. Like, she's had nothing better to do her whole life than train and farm and mm-hmm. survive. Yeah. Like, they're building her to be a survivalist. That's the whole point of the whole society. So it's like, it just works. 
and it just feels like it blends and it's flawless, which again, it's a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it, like going back to what you said, like in the world, her going through like the things she's good at doesn't feel like it's forced. Like, oh, we're going to have to remember that for later. Mm. It feels like so at home in this because she's like, well, you see, I'm good at, um, I'm, I'm good at like, you know, tinkering with these like computers. I'm, I'm good at, you know, marksmanship. I do that every now and again. I'm great at hand to hand combat. Does a bit of jujitsu, even though her arm bar, I rated about a four out of 10, <laughs> um, maybe even a three. Her butt was way too far away. She didn't want to actually um, kill the guy. <laughs> and, um, I think part of it as well is that they show her lose mm-hmm. as in like, she pretty immediately gets her ass handed to her in certain things. And she's not infallible. She's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Like we see her lose, we see her ch- make decisions. And the thing is, she doesn't blame. That's the thing. She doesn't blame anyone. She's for not these talking things. down to us, especially. Yes, yeah, she's not blaming anyone for like her going through her trials. Yes, which feels great. She just wants to get shit done. God, this is this is TV. Just, this is yeah, cinema. This is a while ago. They just wrote you know? when they used to write good things, which again could all fall apart by the end of the season. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But I have faith. I have good faith. Maybe IGN actually gave a realistic review for once. Character one, Lucy, the vault dweller, and her trials of how she's going to journey to the wasteland. Yes. So she's our main... That's pretty obvious, She's our main character, slash one third of our main characters. We have our second character, our Brotherhood of Steel. This kind might of... be slight spoilies, I guess, from here on out. As in, not really, because there's not too much we can go into. Yeah. Well, uh, there's, just not, like... there's not too much you can spoil, because it's the first episode. But just so you know. Yeah, so we have Maximus. Ma- Maximus, who is our um, like kind of conscript to the Brotherhood of Steel. He got found by them as a kid. Found and then is kind of like, has like devoted his life to them. But never really felt at home. Slash, he's like a... Not accepted. Bit of a yeah. black sheep. Not accepted. You know, you looked at it. weirdly. Um, <laughs> so that then he has his storyline of how he's going to kind of find himself... And go on his hero's journey. Prove himself, I Prove guess, himself more than find himself. to himself, but also to the wasteland and to the Brotherhood. Yeah. Um, and then we have our... And get revenge. <laughs> and just, get revenge. Just fuck people up. He's not, a, he's not a happy guy. No, but he is sometimes. Like, he was happy in parts of it when he was, like, kind of getting his way. We see him shoveling shit. Like, you know, I'm excited to see where he goes. <laughs> and then we have character three, um, Walter Goggins. Yeah, the ghoul. The ghoul. I who, can't remember um, his name from the beginning, but he I is lo- the ghoul. I loved him from the start. Mm. His cowboy character... Um, so he was, he was, you see him a bit at the start. He's like a ex famous person who obviously went through some stuff. He's our, he's our um, tragic character, but by the end of it, when they show him in the future, fun fact, ghouls are immortal. Yes. So, so he's just kind of living. Yeah. Two, he's alive 220 years some... later. He's lost a lot. He's mm-hmm. lost his entire life. He's lost most of his skin. I think he's not he having has a like, good day. It's like a fun little Easter egg. Uh, I'll have to have a look at it. I think it's right away. Maybe some bags of like right away on his thing that yeah, are going that into to his keep, tomb. That to keep him alive I think to keep him to from keep not him being from, feral. Yeah, not keep him strong enough. And, I don't. I yeah. don't know. I'll have to. Not someone not will break it down feral. for me in the comments. Thank you. Not feral makes sense to me. But and he is our third character, um, and he gets I guess kind of introduced to the story through some bounty hunters who want his help, um, and he decides that a, a real cowboy gets shit done himself. It's, it's good because, like, we see him pretty at the beginning. Like, he's definitely down in his luck. We feel sorry for him. We have empathy. And at the end, he's just an absolute asshole to Things everyone. Are, I love a, a badass I love a bad who boy. has a propensity to have a heart. Yes. Or who has, like, the ability to. You see that he, he had a family. And you can see where they're going you know? a little bit. Like, he lost a daughter or probably lost mm-hmm. a daughter. We can't confirm that. She might be a ghoul, too, mm-hmm. but probably not. But lost a daughter and now we're probably going to end up with our main character lucy being his new daughter figure that'd be a cool one so like it's all going to come together you you can see the threads and you can see Mm -hmm. them interweaving which again very rare Mm -hmm. lately it's super gory which is fantastic that's great a little bit of a bloody mess perk going on because we've got yeah that's things like that's the game is known for being pretty Mm -hmm. gory so the fact that there's like a perk that's like a fan favorite perk called bloody mess yeah which is like more giblets more blood and like good jibs yeah um and that, like the first the warning that comes up at the start of the first episode is excessive blood violence gore and sex and i'm like you see all those things and they're all great they yeah. show him on you see like gore live and direct like there's, some, a, there's a fantastic scene where someone's the head gun in the is mouth. used as a silencer oh so Beautiful. good but yeah i'm very excited for this show i immediately left the room and told my partner who uh, ignored me because she doesn't give a fuck <laughs> but she, i was like it's so great it's beautiful it's lovely so i'm i'm very excited for this show i would never say this i'm crazy i think i'd give this episode like a 10 out of 10 yeah oh 
Okay, yes. Actually, I agree. I have nothing wrong with this episode. I have nothing wrong with it. The only the thing outset. I thought was after Lucy's intro ended, mm-hmm. I thought that should be the end of the episode. Yes. And I think it still could have been. It was long, but it was allowed to be. I'm not mad at the fact that they squeezed in two other intros mm-hmm. as well, because now we are ready to go. Like, yeah. as of season, as episode two, we're just ready to go. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's probably better that there's a little bit tacked on to the end of a fantastic episode rather than just dragging out everything else yeah. and, like, bogging it down. You're just like, as of episode one, we're good. Yeah. Let's just, episode one let's just is start. the perfect set up episode yeah it's great everything else the whole show pilot. is ready to go from episode two it must be a pretty expensive show apparently mm-hmm. they shot it on film which is an insane thing to do in 2024 uh the show had a 153 million dollar budget so when you watch this and you see how the beautiful show, it is divided that by eight so when you watch this remember that avatar had the same uh budget it just depends on what people can do with it fallout do good everything else dog do dog shit um, but yes, we're, we're excited for the show and um, we'll probably do some more episode breakdowns or yeah, at least honestly. something, definitely something more. Some shows I've been watching recently, Alex Ryder, Shogun, The Gentleman, Halo, Netflix Avatar, and this beats all of them. Mm-hmm. Just the first episode of this is better than all of them. So go watch it right now. Tell us what you think and subscribe to the channel. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. You should do that. <laughs>